Globalization, or globalism, is the contemporary economic strategy that maintains the world marketplace should be free of local, national, or regional limits. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today in part one of our interview with Dr. John Ralston Saul, this author and essayist discusses what fueled his 2005 book, The Collapse of Globalism and the Reinvention of the World. In 1999 I was in Australia and I had a meeting with the head of the Reserve Bank of Australia and I came out of there and that night I gave a speech on national television um, and uh, and in the middle of the speech I said, you know, I think globalization's on the way out, I think it's falling apart, the wheels are coming off the bus. And I gave a whole series of reasons. I think about three years later I did a cover of Harper's Magazine in the States saying that it was essentially over. And then I wrote the book, The Collapse of Globalism, what, four years ago now, I guess. And, uh, you know, people were surprised and I've been around a while so they felt they had some people felt they had to listen and they were curious. I don't think they quite believed me, you know, because there's really nobody in the economics community who can imagine an alternate world. Even the ones who disagree are inside the logic. They're just editing on the edges. Hey, guess what? <laughs> it's, it's collapsing pretty fast. But I think it already was. And I think the problem now is that the focus is almost entirely on uh, uh, the money markets and the financial system. It's a conundrum because the financial system is the problem, is one of the big problems. It's like this gigantic souffle of meaningless money that doesn't do anything except sort of have fun with itself. You know, it's really pretty self-indulgent. But, but uh, you know, the British economy has been restructured around it. All of our economies have been partly restructured around it. We've got, given up doing all sorts of things on the basis of a delusionary misunderstanding that which was that money is real. Money isn't real. Money is something that makes other things real. And so it's very big and if you let it collapse that has all sorts of implications. So you don't want it to collapse. But if you don't let it collapse, what you're doing is stabilizing delusion, stabilizing inflation. And in order to do that, which is what they're trying to do, really, you, you basically have to freeze a lot of the rest of the economy in place, in an artificial place, in order to hold up this ridiculous souffle that's falling. You know, they're trying to inject egg whites into a falling souffle. It doesn't work, right? The intellectual cleansing in the, in, in the university economics departments has been so severe over the last couple of decades that even though there are some people saying interesting things, they were nowhere near power. And to get them anywhere near power is virtually impossible because of all the gates. So you're seeing that basically the advice for change is coming from the people who created the problem. It's ridiculous. And even, you know, Paulson in the United States, who will soon be gone, thank God, you know, is one of the one of the originators of the problem. But, you know, equally will, you know, Obama be able to find somebody who isn't one of the originators of the problem. I mean, Prime Minister Britain, who's being treated as a hero, is one of the originators of the problem. 